Good afternoon, my colleagues. Now, general anesthesia sometimes is connected with the disorders of consciousness, and also this problem sometimes we find in ICU. What about the prevention and what about the treatment? Our consciousness is composed of two general components, arousal and content. Depending on the anatomic location of the brain dysfunction, primary neurologic disease such as stroke and trauma, as well as systemic condition ranging from organ dysfunction to sepsis, may variably affect both arousal and content. Impaired consciousness mechanism range from mass effect on brainstem arousal structure to diffuse impairment of B hemispheric cerebral cortical function. Prognosis for recovery is most strongly linked to the underlying causes. Our conscious, human conscious, to understand conscious, we have to understand the mechanism of its function, which is to effectively organize sensory inputs from our environment. Conscious is the basic, essential outcome of the process of organizing these sensory inputs, resulting in cognitive, mental, emotional, executive, instinctual, or other marginally awake states. Anesthesia in the brain. Sometimes neurologic complications after anesthesia are relatively uncommon but can be severe. Delayed arousal and postoperative cognitive dysfunction may follow general anesthesia. It's important in this situation to discriminate between the effects of anesthesia and alternative explanation. Which complication? Neuropathy and transient gluteal and leg pain are the most frequent complication of regional anesthesia. Headache from cerebrospinal fluid leak and paraparesis related to epidural hematoma may also occur. Seizures are infrequent after general or regional anesthesia, and anesthesia can generally be safely administered to patients with epilepsy. Anesthetic agents can be used in the neurointensive care unit to treat refractory status epilepticus or intracranial hypertension, for example, barbiturates. What about the pathology is considered of major interest in public health as it may involve toward dementia increasing healthcare cost due to long-term treatment of patients. It is then necessary to identify the factors associated with the develop of postoperative delirium. International level report and association with the anesthetic technique which type surgery was performed, fluid management, genetic and post-operative factors. The anesthetic technique where delirium was more frequent was general anesthesia. Which disorders? TNS function after anesthesia in ICU can appear as delirium, post-operative cognitive dysfunction, might cognitive impairment, and last dimension. What about the history delirium? According to the Roman philosopher Marcus Terentius Varro in the lingua latina, delirium is a term of Latin origin coming from the agriculture activity of plowing. The term literally means going off the plank track. Its figurative meaning is the similar to the concept of becoming man. It was likely used for the first time in medical language by Avrus Cornelius Celsus in his work. Now, this is the history. Delirium is a term meaning sudden confusion. It refers to a sudden change in mental function. Delirium can cause people to be either aggressive and agitated or sleepy and inactive, or sometimes a combination inactive and agitated. Now, delirium is particularly frequent in critical ill patients occurring in 50 
80% of a medical ICU patient, not only in anesthesia, after anesthesia, but also very often in ICU patient. Now, probable causes delirium, as you can see here. For example, loss of privacy, for example, no change of clothes, unable to wash, pillow, and other anatomy of patient, as you can see here. Delirium causes drugs, low oxygen, infection, retention of the urine, ictal states, metabolic upset, subdural sleep deprivation, and many, many other causes. Postoperative delirium is defined as acute confusion state with altered levels of attention and consciousness. It presents for a short period of time with a transient and fluctuating evolution with long-term outcome of cognitive dysfunction. It has been observed mostly in extreme age groups and has been associated with the factors that increase the risk of occurrence. What is this delirium again? Delirium is typically caused by a medical condition, substance intoxication, alcohol, medication side effect. <clears throat> now, why does delirium happen? High cortical dysfunction, neurotransmitter dysfunction, for example, reduced acetylcholine levels, opiate, hypoxia, inflammation, serotonin fluctuation, dopamine excess, glutamate excess, and other, other causes. The current delirium described as acute and fluctuating disturbances of consciousness with reduced ability to focus, maintain, or shift attention accompanied by change in cognition and perceptual disturbances secondary to a general medical condition. Risk factor, pre-existing risk factor, dementia, age, severity of illness, comorbidity. On the right side, glucose, pain, infection, anticholinergic medication, dehydration, sedative, analgetic drugs, and other factors. Now, summarize advanced ICU technology and education. Now, critical ill patient on the left side, survivor and family. Now, delirium, alteration in neurotransmitter, for example, concentration, neuronal dysfunction, neuronal test. Managing ICU delirium, modify risk factor, host factor, acute illness, sepsis, hypoxemia, in introgenic environment, metabolic disturbances, light, noise, sleep pattern, anticholinergic, sedative, and analgetic needs. Now, risk factor for RCU, again, aging, metabolic, hypoxemia, pain, sleep deprivation, and other, many causes. How is delirium categorized? Hyperactive, Name is the ICU psychosis, agitation, restlessness, pulling lines, and tube emotional uh, liability. Mix, above the 54% causes, and hypoactive, now connected with the name encephalopathy, often unrecognized withdrawal, apathy, lethargy, decreased responsiveness, far more common likely due to sedative medication. Hyperactive, mix, and hypoactive. Now, time frame of delirium and POC2. Emergency delirium, post-operative delirium, and post-operative cognitive dysfunction. Now, immediately, post-operative 24, 72 hours, and weeks, months, post-operative cognitive dysfunction. One example. This patient after abdominal surgery and connected with the infection, yes, had traumatic hallucination while in the ICU. Now, this information bring this New York Times above this lady. <clears throat> the room is acute, fluctuating syndrome of altered attention, awareness, and cognition, precipitated by underlying condition or even in vulnerable person. 
Now, again, this definition. Now, when you look on this slide, yes, preoperative, intraoperative, in postoperative risk factor for this situation. Now, our brain connected with this risk factor, hypoperfusion, neuroanatomic changes, neurotransmitter changes, sedative, analgetic drugs, opioids, benzodiazepines, A, and other. Europe Society Anesthesiology bring the guidelines of postoperative delirium four years ago and recommended and give the information about this. What, what does it mean, postoperative delirium? What about the treatment? What about the incidence and other? Now, this document brings the more than two. Uh, uh, 230 million surgical procedures are performed each year worldwide and of which more than 8 million are in the Europe. In Europe, the in hospital mortality rate up to a maximum of 60 days in 3% after elective surgery and nearly 10% after emergency surgery. This document also gives the preoperative assessment, anesthesia, recovery room, and part. This is four years ago. Now, ICU delirium, complication or prolonged ICU stay, it causes confusion or agitation. Now, this syndrome represents the compensation of cerebral function in response to one or more pathophysiological stressors. Therefore, understanding how to identify delirium can be central to recognizing acute illness in patients of all age. Mechanism delirium still is not fully understood. The main hypothesis is reversible impairment of cerebral oxidative metabolism and multiply neurotransmitter abnormalities. Now, <clears throat> level of consciousness for diagnosis and content of conscious. Now, again, this frame of delirium and POCD. When we look on this side, now, 40% of hospital patient is six, five, uh, 65 years or older, one, two, three, four. Now, 10 till 40% elderly surgical patient becomes delirium, or 50 till 80% of ICU patient will have a delirium, irrespectively of the age, because in ICU patient, obtain more sedative, hypnotic drugs, benzodiazepines, antibiotics, for example, and other. Another problem, the, the disturbances of the brain, is also postoperative cognitive dysfunction. This postoperative cognitive dysfunction after delirium and sometimes possible to finish as dementia. Delirium, 115% of elderly patients after general anesthesia, might neurocognitive disorders, dementia, multiply cognitive deficit and impairment in occupation and social function. Postoperative cognitive dysfunction, alteration in orientation, memory, thinking, attention, insight or other aspect of central nervous uh, function. POCD can last for a few days to a few years. It decreases the patient quality of life and increases the cost of hospitalization and out of the hospital care. It also increases surgical morbidity and mortality. Postoperative cognitive dysfunction has significant clinical implications, such as decrease the quality of life and increase the mortality, as you can see here. Now, summarize a variety of now characteristics of POCD, age, yes, fever years of education and other. 
the surgeon and anesthesiologist have to know that POCD is indeed correlated with the concentration interleukin-6 and protein-100 because POCD is a common post-operative complication and is related to multiply factors for the investigation of the inflammatory response, regulatory pathways, and the specific contribution interleukin-6 and gene polymorphism is necessary and meaningful. POCD is important concern for the anesthesiologist. Inflammatory response, correlation factors, protein 100, neurospecific NLS, interleukin 1, interleukin 6, 8, 10, and tumor necrotic factor and C-reactive protein. Postoperative cognitive dysfunction is common following cardiac and non-cardiac surgery. May study suggest that the inflammatory response is a key contributor for this state. Now, we spoke about the delirium and postoperative cognitive function. What about the anatomical and function connectivity of the brain? Importance place for the origin delirium and POCD is this anatomic connectivity, function connectivity, and last effective connectivity, as you can see here on this slide. <clears throat> now, also, when you look here, now is the cholinergic dopamine and serotonin projection system in our brain. There are the damage in this state. <clears throat> Mechanism of delirium neurotransmitter, as you can see here, GABAMINO, ACID, DOPAMINE on the left side, ACETICHOLINE, CORTISOL, and many other examples. Activation, inhibition, deficit, and excess neurotransmitter and cytokine summarize on this slide. Dopamine, excess dopamine may also be involved in the formation of the delirium as it affects the regulatory relays of acetylcholine. In the state of delirium, there is an insufficiency of the cholinergic system and excess of dopamine. On the left side, the delirium emit fish. Thumb brain dysfunction, high cortical dysfunction, neurotransmitter, serotonin predisposition and precipitant, clinical iatrogenic organization risk factor. Now, dopamine administration possibly a risk factor for delirium. Now, question. Sleep deprivation, delirium, as you can see here, benzodiazepines, opioids, and benzodiazepines, opioids, withdrawal syndrome can contribute to an imbalance in neurotransmitter and alteration melatonin production. Now, delirium connected with the pain for this pain is important is the important factor for delirium <clears throat> rest now causes of delirium as you can see here on this slide what about the biomarker we spoke about protein 100 and procalcitonin or c reactive protein other biomarker also elevated brain derived neuro Trophic factors, neurospecific NLS, interleukin, and cortisol. Some drugs and disorders of consciousness, analgetic, antibiotics, important, corticoids, dopamine agoist, gastrointestinal agents, herbal, and other. Please your attention on the left side, antibiotics and antiviral drugs and analgetic. Now... <clears throat> This is some example about the antibiotics, also levofloxacin induced acute psychosis. Now, theory for postoperative delirium, acetylcholine, neurotransmitter, now we spoke about this. External causes, social isolation, stress, deficit in vision of hearing. Now, <clears throat> They run interpretation and evaluation. No. Delirium. Diagnosis is not easy. 
diagnosis and monitor, intensive care delirium, screening, checklist, yes, confusion assessment method for the ICU. Now, management strategy for prevention of post-operative uh, delirium. Benzodiazepines have been demonstrated to increase delirium in the cardiac surgical ICU and should be used with caution recommendation. Now, what about the drugs? Tiaprit is a drug that selective block dopamine 2 and dopamine 3 receptor in the brain. Now, next, Tiaprit is the selective dopamine receptor has the high solubility. Very useful is the alpha 2 adrenergic agonist dexmetomidin when we use in our hospital, our department and other uh, at the uh, hospital in Slovakia. Melatonin also helps treat ICU delirium. Maybe you hear about this. Conclusion, now delirium is the frequent disease in the ICU and associated with the pure outcome, is often under-recognized, can be monitored and rapidly identified. New approach to manage and prevent delirium are emerging every day. Dexmetomidin, now here, alpha-2 adrenergic agonist is very useful for in this treatment. Also, not only delirium and postoperative cognitive dysfunction, also sometimes question is, Last year, does anesthesia cause sleep disturbances, surgical stress response, the body hormonal and metabolic response to the trauma of surgery, because the surgery is the trauma, is quite profound and has an important effect on the subsequent amount and, and quality of sleep. Now, Treatment, this patient with any disorders of conscience, is very demanding in the term of expertise and economics. It still represents not only a medical problem, but the subsequent social problems for the patient, relatives and society. Now, anesthetist, doctor, is the typical person with the head, hair, fitness tracker, yes, color, wool socks, comfortable clothes, now reading material, take the coffee, the, the typical, but it's the joke. Now, my colleagues, this lecture finish about the anesthesia and next lecture will be about the epidural and spinal anesthesia and about other tip anesthesia. Thank you for your kind attention and now on the left side is the winter uh, uh, time this day and I hope that everybody will be happy when the, on the right side now you find this uh, better, better. Thank you again.